Hello, um, I wanted to put together a real short uh, video um, because when we look at Power BI, um, the tutorial that we're using has a couple um, uh, a couple areas that might be a little bit different from what they have and what we have. Um, one, which we'll get to in a second, is the tutorial talks about um, a color saturation feature. Um, and so I wanted to uh, provide a little feedback on that. And in the tutorial, they talk about it later on, like towards the second half. But I thought that um, I might mention it here uh, if you're looking to do that in your um, in, in your charts and such. Um, so um, anyways, I'll mention that. Uh, the other thing uh, in the tutorial, um, they have you um, get data from an HTML site. And that HTML site is um, it has a dead link. Um, to it. So from the time that the video was made to now, somehow that link was broken. So um, I'll look into seeing uh, if there's uh, some other data that you can get from an HTML um, just to practice that. Um, but I, I wouldn't worry about that too much. Um, you can still do the whole tutorial and um, the data uh, that uh, is in day one uh, for the beginner tutorial should all be appropriate for uh, the work. You can do just about everything um, with, with what you have. So with that, I just want to, uh, again, take a second to look at, um, and I'm going to move it over to the, to the screen where Power BI is, uh, but maybe the, the color saturation piece, uh, I just wanted to say a word or two about that. Hello. Okay, so I have pulled up here um, the uh, Power BI um, Canvas, and this is the um, second part of the beginner tutorial um, and the uh, data that is uh, associated with it uh, regarding uh, geography. So again, if you're in the second part, um, and it, you could do this, you know, with with either of the uh, data sets that you have and just choosing um, any of these um, graphics that you're creating. Again, this one just happens to be the second portion of the tutorial and it is focused on the geography um, data uh, uh, query that was created earlier. So one of the elements that they talk about um, in the tutorial is color saturation. And basically the idea is that um, with um, data that varies by degree, um, you may want to have a visualization which shows maybe a deeper, darker uh, emphasis on the data that is bigger as opposed to the data that is smaller. Um, so if you have a high score in one category and you want it to be a darker color, visually that just indicates that it's stronger or has more, um, it's just bigger in general. So again, if we look at the difference by region, um, we have the data here that scores higher in, in a darker shade and then it progresses to a lighter shade and then eventually red if it's, if it's in the negative. So um, w one of the ways, again, um, <clears throat> to, to work through this is to, if, if there was a, a data saturation uh, component, but our version or the version I have doesn't have that um, kind of as a field here like they show in the video. So if you go into format um, and then if you go into data colors, um, then you can set these colors uh, in, in whatever way you want. So if we just used a uniformed color, we would click on the default color and of course you can change that to be whatever whatever color color you want. Another option though is to create and this f of x, that's sort of like uh, a uniform um, term for like a function of some type. So if you click on that, um, then it'll pull up eventually, I think it will pull up, there we go, a, um, a, a scale, if you will, where you can um, create 
uh, a diverging color scheme. And so click diverging there. Um, and then a medium uh, center and a maximum um, is, is, is coded by color. Um, and so this is another way that, and again, it's like a workaround if you don't have that piece on your drop down menu uh, on the main part there for color saturation. It basically does the same thing. So, um, and, and again, it's talked about later on in the tutorial, but if you're earlier in the tutorial, then this is just a way to, to work around it. So if on the low values, you'll remember that we had a darker color and you can choose more colors if you want, if you want a true red. This is not a true red, but I'm gonna click it anyways uh, because it just kind of shows shows that that's, that's red. Um, if you wanted to move, say, from red and then maybe green or something like that was a, a, a good color for you, um, then maybe maybe we could use a, a green color for the, you know, because green usually means good and red usually means bad. Um, and so we have sort of a range here. Um, the second thing that they'll, they'll talk about that, that might make sense is where you have, um, you know, depending on your scale, um, this will do a scale between the lowest point and the highest point, and it'll kind of range it out. So if we clicked OK, um, you can see that it goes from this red all the way up to this green. But this data is a little disproportional. So like if you were kind of say, well, look, is it evenly distributed or is it normally distributed where the peak is in the middle? then you'd say, yeah, that, that might be great, but that's not the way this data is. It's heavily weighted above. And the reality is there's only a few um, data points here where it's in the negative, which might be red. So you might want to rescale it, um, or rescale the coloring anyways. And so um, this value piece, you might, you might do custom and enter a value and maybe you have, in this particular case, again, depending on the way the data looks, you might have like a negative number in there. The middle value might be something like, like zero because anything above zero is, should be probably green or something like that. And then the high value might be, you know, you look at your data and you see what the highest values are. And I think they're in the low millions. Um, so that's, that's something there. We can just kind of look at it and just see what it looks like and see if it's appropriate. And then as we do that, you'll see that, you know, the upper part is really a good dark green. Um, and then it starts descending in value till where we get to close to zero. And then once we hit a negative numbers, um, then it starts to turn, turn red. Um, so again, this is that color saturation feature. And again, I just wanted to mention this real quickly. If you were um, looking at that and our version was slightly different um, than, than the other, then I wanted to make sure um, that that was something that, that, you, that you saw. So anyways, um, let me know if you have any questions. Thanks.